recording. Okay. What we're looking at today is subnetting. And this example of placed a subnet network or a network before it's subnetted. We've got 192.1.1.0. In this scenario, we require 10 subnets. What I like to teach in subnetting is take a step by step process and try and repeat that process so you don't miss any of these steps and you build on that level of things. So what we're looking at here is, well, which class does this IP version 4 fit into? Is it class A, B, or C? And what we need to do there is look at the number that it begins with, always the first octet. And in this case, this number is 192, and if we recall class B, it's always the defining class for me, runs from 128, to 191, that's class B. So I know that A would be below 128, C is above 191. In this case, 192 would therefore belong to C. So we must establish our class, in this case, class C. So we are clear that it's class C. Knowing that it's class C, we need to remind ourselves of the structure of class C. If you recall, class C has a structure as follows, it's a network, 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 host structure. So the first three octets make up the network portion by default, always with class C. And what we understand that by that is that if we place a one in all positions where there's ends, and there's eight ends, eight ends, eight ends, we would see that we'd have a mask, therefore, of 255, dot two five five whoops dot two five five dot zero that dot zero relates to the last octet where there's no network bits so that's our structure we're working with and what we understand from subnetting is we borrow from the host portion from this portion so there's eight host bits to borrow from we can't have all of them there's always two left behind no matter what class we subnet in two bits are always left behind. The next question is, well, how many bits is required to create 10 subnets? There's a quick, sure way method of just using your fingers to work this out. There's also a formula. We might recall the formula as two to the number of bits borrowed, take away two, is the available subnets. This availability question is arising here of why do we take two away? This, is, this sticks for host, but not necessarily for subnets, because we can use subnet zero. So let's not, let's not even consider taking two off, as we used to teach. So in this case, we need to know what number here, in the end position, will be equal to or greater than 10. So we can go through, well, one bit gives us two. That's not enough. Two bits gives us four. So I'm just going 2, 4, doubling, 8, 3 bits gets us 8, 4 bits, 4 fingers, gets us 16. Now, 3 bits wasn't enough because we needed at least 10, so we need 4 bits. So the n in this case will be 4 bits. 2 to the 4 is equal to or greater than 10 because it's actually really 16. So we're satisfy, satisfying this formula. Again, I say use your fingers. Start off simply. One finger is two. Two is four. Three fingers is eight. Two to the power of three is eight. Two to the power of four is 16. Two to the power of five is 32. So it's just fingers. Fingers equal bits. And you can quickly get to that scenario here. So what we've ascertained is we need to borrow four bits to create a network with 10 subnets in a class C structure. So that's where we need to get to, no matter what system we're using, those first three questions. Answer that first. You can kill that.